They'll be calling you a radical. Hi, Kevin Blanche, the Great Salt Lake. I come out here to do a video on Fukushima and the environmental poison. I live right here. I spent so much of my life right there as a kid. They charge you nine bucks now. I want to, and I, I didn't realize this, the amphitheater was still here. I didn't know they'd read, well, here, period. It's been here for 11 years, believe it or not. So it's got lighting. And I, so I walked in and I've been talking to the ranger in there and I'm like, how do, can I use it for a lecture? And you know, could I bring people out here? And he says, yeah. You know, and I, I says, what about the lights? I says, it's got this beautiful light. He says, you know, I've been here for 11 years. I've never seen them turned on. Here we go. Here we go. Talk about people right in their own backyard. It is amazing. This is probably the most underappreciated piece of landscape in the world. Like I said, as we were kids, we'd have keg parties right there. Uh, it was so fun. You know, you didn't have to pay to get out here. Then I grew up right here. This is an incredible, magnificent jam. And let's talk about environmental economics. I'll give my lecture right now. This beautiful theater. As you know, I was working on my PhD when I got leukemia. As my father had been nuked right there out there in the Nevada test site, a drafted Marine. I was writing a book about this whole said subject matter, about the Fed, about a whole bunch of different things, about economics, as my PhD was called post-ignorance. And the reason I was so offended at how dummy down we had become and how the sheeple are so groomed and so easy. And I'm like, why? I've never in the history of this country, how can these people be swayed this easily by Rupert and his machine as you guys get all radical about the Supreme Court justices now? As in my PhD, I would say, name two Supreme Court justices. No one could, it's college students. No one could do it. Boy, and now you want to get venomous. Where were you when they made the decision in 2000. Where were you when everybody was going crazy? I was going crazy as Tribe himself said it's the biggest slap to the Constitution in history. Why do we have the Electoral College? Why do we have the Electoral College? To give states rights. So 40 million people in California can't control the population when we have 400,000 in Wyoming. To make it a more fair place. So, okay, so as the count goes on in Florida, what do the five radicals in robes decide? When Gore, you do know Gore won by any count. You can look the seven independent people that went out and counted on Gore won. How come it was not reported? Oh, 9, one, nine 11. So we covered up. It was the biggest theft. And if you don't think thievery can grow and change the world as you are living a total lie, I think it is a metaphorical giant as the hairspray, they're all, they're all fakers as she died today. As her great line, I think they're all faking. She was a she was a metaphorical brilliant genius as she passed today. I think it is so gigantic. Alito and Roberts, the two radicals of all radicals, would not be on that court if he would not have stole. Bush W appointed both those two maniacs. We knew Scalia was a maniac. I mean, come on, people don't even know. We know what Clarence Thomas is all about. And, you know, it just shows you how that it grows. The lie grows. Where were you? That is the biggest slap to the Constitution in history because we have the Electoral College to give state rights. So who overturned the Florida Supreme Court? The feds. What is the old line? How many votes did it take to be president of the United States? Six. Five Supreme Court justices and your daddy put them. As now we get Citizens United comes through via the lie court. As it, This is not my commentary. This is Tribe himself. This is Byers himself. Byers in his dissension in the Gore-Bush decision. That photograph will be the most iconic giant photograph in a hundred years and people don't even never even seen it. That is the metaphorical giant. As he says himself, it's totally delegitimized us. We have no legitimacy. He said that after that. They have no legitimacy. Yet they control the agenda. It's a giant lie. It is a grown as a lie. Let's talk about environmental economics. As I did my use of this camera, walking around right here, 2,000 interviews. What's your opinion of Congress? How we hang in? Who's your congressman? Right here. No one knows who your congressman is. It's that piece of shit bishop who hates the environment. Who, like I said, build a chemical fire in your front yard if he had his way. As no one even knows it. Let's talk about the Gulf. Let's talk about the Gulf. As offshore, the deep, deep drilling was never done until the last several years. It wasn't pushed through. How many jobs did it create? As they are slave creators, not job creators. How many jobs? With, and we'll do this without the multiple effect. Without the multiple effect. How many jobs they create? A couple hundred thousand? How many did they destroy by that nightmare? And they got away with it. They didn't have to pay no penalty to no one. 
as they control our courts. And why do they get away with it? Again, it comes full circle to the Supreme Court. As the Exxon Valdez nightmare, it was overturned. As that is a true story. When I was a derivative trader in Manhattan, I got invited. And that pedophile who was having sex with young boys was the CEO of BP at the time. What did he call himself? Lord Brown? And he spoke, and he was calling himself Lord. Finally, in the Q&A, they called on me, and my boss knew, and I stood up, and I said, where the fuck do you get off coming in the United States, poisoning our fucking waters, poisoning our, and calling yourself fucking Lord? You know, Fred, Bill, Bob, whatever the fuck name is, fuck you. I got a lot of fucking trouble for it. As I walked in on the trading platform, you know, the next day, a standing ovation. Of course, those maniacs would not admit it. How many jobs in the tourism industry in the fishing industry, in the food industry, in the happiness industry, in the joy industry were destroyed. Millions, for generations. How arrogant it is to think we can drill baby drill with, and look, I understand we need energy, I understand. But we could do it in a clean fashion. Everybody says, you can't take these nuclear plants off like a bullshit. That is such a lie, it is such a lie. Germany has done it, we don't need them. We do not need them. We can convert coal to clean coal. We just need to get the, you know, we charge $9 to get in here. He tells me $1 of that. $1 of it goes to the parks. That is the problem right here. What The dispersion of the dichotomy of the redistribution of wealth is so grotesque, as we have always been socialized, and the Earth is the most socialized creature. I mean, you think about it. How, you know, no economic theory, no politician, no society can ever take that. I mean, Mother Earth is the social iconic, it, you know, by definition, commune communal, communal, socialism, because nuclear fallout via Fukushima, BP spills and it knows no borders. It knows no borders. It can't draw a line. It can't wrap itself up in a flag. Mother Earth and the jet stream know no borders. The ocean currents know no borders. We're all downwinders, every one of us. No, that test site is right there. You know, gay flew out of right there. I grew up right there, as we used to have keg parties right there. Oh, some of the most beautiful girls I ever, oh, wow right there. As I'll start using this theater, I'm, he's going to see if he can't work on the lights for me and I'm going to get a group out here and we'll come out. It's amazing what you can utilize in your own backyard. Like I said, I got leukemia. It came out. I did dye my hair blue in honor of the Pacific and the Atlantic. Really, the economic lie, the Supreme Court lie, the political lie, the religious lie. The religious lie. Have they have tricked you into politics and economics to being religion? When in any serious debate you have, whether it be economics, philosophical, happiness, this study that we've done, this Anne Rand, me, 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 philosophical idealism for Ronald Reagan, trickle down on your head, it can, has been a giant failure. It has been a giant, and when we're going to pivot off of it, you want to keep walking that walk. As they murder us, there will be millions die, millions from Fukushima, of leukemia. Millions will die of leukemia, as that brilliant, genius, beautiful writer, she died. She died of leukemia yesterday. How great was her wit, how great was her mind, how genius, as she said, I think they're all faking. He could have sex with a Venetian blind. How brilliant is anybody who can consapsal into a cliche, into a line, whole philosophies, whole thing. As literature has been written, there's only been a few that could ever do it. My father was brilliant at it, as he was nuked to death right there at Drafton Marine in the Nevada. And we grew up on this beautiful ranch right here. As I spent my childhood on this beautiful lake and this beautiful Wasatch of Utah, two million people live right here and they don't even come out here. Let's, and the economic context of this, nine dollars to get here. Four or five hundred people coming a day, they're getting more than ever. None of them are from the United States. They're all foreigners. They're coming out here, generating money, wasting the money. They use it on good things. They auctioned off to murder a deer. The, the biggest mule deer in the world are right here. They auctioned off 265000 for a guy to go up and say, here, I did the stucco work on the dwelling right there. I did the stucco work on the dwelling. Those deer would walk up, they're massive, they're native, they're beautiful, they're incredible. Almost walk up to your feet out of your hand. They need money so bad they claim they auctioned off. This guy paid 265000 last year, guy this year, they do two of them a year, 150000 Here, come here, dear. That ain't honey. It's grotesque. It, it is grotesque what we evolved into a people. As she said, that beautiful 
beautiful, incredible Freudian genius that she was, as she died from leukemia. Environmental poisoning, leukemia, make no mistake about it, the two no cause of exposure to benzene, exposure to radiation, as I've gotten leukemia, and I've, there's no doubt in my mind, no doubt in my mind, is we all have Chernobyl in us. We all have the Nevada test site. We all have it. Fukushima's put so many of us over the top, and Fukushima is Chernobyl on steroids by thousands of times, and it will kill, it will literally kill millions of us later down of leukemia, just the way she went. As that beautiful article was written, and it says, her friends wrote it so beautifully, said she died, she was so alive when she died. It reminds me so much of my father as I was writing my book, and I was writing about him. As I said, he died with his mind on fire, like a grass fire, with a wit like Twain, with a genius like Steinbeck, with a soul like FDR. My father was an incredible man, and he died just like that. And he was horrible and was ugly, just like she died. And millions are going to die. Millions will die from Fukushima of leukemia. That's what it does. That's what it does, is it blows across these landscapes and gets into our food chain. There is no hiding. You cannot hide. You cannot, because it knows no boundaries. Mother Earth is the communal. We are all tied together by one thing, the only thing that really matters, the environment. Antelope Island, Utah, right in my backyard. Kevin Blanche. They did think it was the Pacific when they first got here. I wonder why. I'm going to go down there and go for a swim right now. Can't get this wet. I got a bullet hole in me now, but it came out. Stay tuned.